everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Architect Moira and for today's video, I am going to tell you everything that I do at work as an architect. You know, not everything, but you know, I'll give you a general overview. So this topic is actually something that I've never really spoken much about previously on this channel just because of the fact that I am just an employee. Di naman ako may ari ng kumpanya, so it's not like I can disclose every single thing that I do or yung mga projects kano. I'm not gonna be doing that, okay? But this video will just be yun nga parang general overview of what it's like to be a project manager in architecture. Kasi ayun, I work at the project management department. Iko sure ko na sabi ko na yun before dito. But yeah, I just really wanted to share it with you guys. Kasi I know when I I was starting out, I had no clue what I was gonna be in for. So, I was doing a from college. Ganun. And fresh grad, ako, I didn't know that I could be a project manager. But the opportunity came to me, I said yes. And you know, I learned a lot. If you're curious about what it's like to be an architect in the Philippines, to be a PM architect in the Philippines, um, then this video is for you. And before I start, my disclaimer na ho, that the views and opinions of this host does not reflect that of the company, the management, and the network chart. Yeah, this is just based on my own experience. Um, probably sa ibang company, iba din yung pwede mong ma-experience if ibang position din yung um, ano mo. Anyways, basta, you, know, you know all the drill ganon. So, ayun, okay. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. Woo! So, for a little bit of background, I started working back in 2020. I've been working almost four years now. Oh my gosh, And I've actually made previous videos about uh, how to apply for a job preparing your CV. Ganon, and I'll link them down below. And there, I discussed na you can go for either a small firm or a bigger company. And very magkaiba sila kapag smaller firm ka kasi. I guess, mas marami kang pwedeng ma-experience na kind of work in architecture while it being in a bigger company. Uh, the company I work for, we're departmentalized. Kaya ako PM lang. So, ayun, I work at a bigger firm. I think we're around like at most 150 people in the company and we're departmentalized into three so there is project management which is what i do there is design department which is yung mga nag design and there is the technical department which is yung mga gumagawa ng drawings i also have a whole story time about how i got my job if you want to know more about that and all that drama you can click the link down below oh so yeah you know three departments that you could go into if you're going into a bigger company, usually ganun naman yung departments nila. And pinagkaiba niya is iba't ibang stage kasi of the design ka involves. Meron kasi tayong around, I guess, five na design stages. So the first one is conceptual design. So ito yung parang conceptualized pa lang talaga. The next is schematic design. Next is design development, which is medyo mag freeze plan ka na. Uh, last for construction drawings and pinaka pinaka last is the construction period. When you're a PM, you're involved in all of these stages kasi nga ikaw yung nagmamanage ng project so you have to be familiar from start to finish. Kapag design ka naman, usually involved ka sa start so that's conceptual, schematic and I guess design development na rin kasi nga dun tayo mag-freeze ng plan. Then when you're in tech, you're involved in the DD and FCD kasi doon yung bulk ng drawings na kailangan i-produce. Then for the construction period, usually PM na lang yung naiiwan kasi siya yung a-attend ng meetings, ganun. And then siya na lang mag relay to design and tech if may kailangan ni update with the design because of things na nangyayari sa site, ganun, etc, etc. So anyways, to the next part. So what are the tasks that I do as a project manager in architecture? So the first and foremost, kung di pa obvious, it's managing the project. Project. So like I said, um, involved ka na sa simula pa lang. Ikaw yung nakikipag-coordinate with the team, both internal and external. You also are the one who makes sure that the requirements are met, whether it be code, whether it be client standard, or yung mga wants and needs ni client, ganon. So, ikaw yung nag-make sure na lahat ng yon is nagagawa ng tama. Although magkaiba ang architect ha, kapag nasa design firm ka, and versus kapag nasa site. So, kapag nasa site, eh, nasa site ka talaga, nasa isang project 
public ka lang, usually nakatutok. Tapos sa design firm ka naman nag-work, you're handling uh, a lot of different projects and yun, more of on the design ka. Yung pag implement sila site na bahala doon. Pero, kailangan yung para yung mag-coordinate ni design firm architect and ni site architect to make sure na aligned yung ginagawa nila and aligned sa intent nung design. <laughs> Anyways, your next task is to attend meetings. So, ayun, ikaw yung humaharap sa clients or sa engineers or whatever. So, so core team, ganun. Kapag may meeting, usually dapat may PM na present kasi nga you have to take note of lahat ng mapag-usapan to make sure na yung ginagawa ng team mo aligned naman with kung ano man yung napag-usapan and napag-agreehan during the meetings. Next is coordination. So, ito talaga is like the biggest chunk of PM work. Minsan, nauubos yung buong araw mo na nakikipag-usap ka lang sa iba't ibang tao, which is very necessary din naman talaga. So, yeah, ikaw nakikipag-coordinate with either internally, which means like yung mga design and tech uh, people from your firm, sa mga boss mo, ganun. You're also the one coordinating with clients and yung mga engineers, yung mga people sa site. Ayun, ikaw yung nakikipag-usap. So, as an introvert, <laughs> sobrang nag-grow din ako. <laughs> Kaya ko na makipag-usap sa tao kahit pa paano <laughs> dahil nag-PM ako. <laughs> Next is code checking. Uh, this is something na mas natutunan ko lang din nung nag-start na ako mag-work. I mean, sure, we studied this when we were in college. We learned about the NBC, yung fire code, accessibility law, etc. etc. But I don't think I really paid much attention to it. Like, siguro general lang yung alam ko. Pero yung mga specific details ng mga specific sections, mas na familiarize lang din talaga ako when I started working. Next is area tabulations. Now, this is also something that I didn't uh, read much into when I was in college. I mean, sure, we did, we did like mga Excel files na may mga space programming, ganon. Pero I didn't really understand the importance of it as much. Nung nag-work ako, tsaka ko lang din siya talagang naintindihan na uh, very important and particular yung mga clients, especially if they're like developers or if for business yung building na ginagawa nyo. Kasi every square meter counts. Kasi Yun yung babayarin nila. <laughs> so, yeah, kaya din siya importante. Next is documentation. Since involved ka from the very start, kailangan lahat, alam mo, nag-take down notes ka, ganun. Um, you're gonna do the minutes of the meeting, gawin din yung nag-prepare ng specifications. It's, it's a lot of documentation, like sa emails and everything. Yeah, but important din yun, kasi kailangan may resibo ka ng <laughs> lahat ng design decisions na ginagawa. Next is site visit. Madalas ikaw yung nakakasama kapag may site visit, parang hindi naman na wala na may PM during site visit. And it depends then on the concerns ni site kung may sasama na either from design or tech. Uh, yun, it depends. Pero usually PM nagsa-site. Okay din siya for exposure. Last but not the least, this probably takes up a big chunk of time then is submittals and approval. So, in architecture, meron tayong pinatawag na RFA, which is request for approval, and RFI, request for information. So, ito yung mga pinapasa ng mga people from site to the design firm architect para ipa-approve yung mga materials na ginagamit nila, yung mga methodologies na ginagawa nila, um, mga paint swatches, ganon. So, for example, we bigay silang paint swatch, tas ako, i-check ko yun um, to make sure na okay, up to standard ba to? Ito ba yung na nasa material board na pinapare namin? Tama ba? What if 10% lighter ko gawin yung shade? Baka mas okay in actual. Ganon. Sa'yo, dadaan yun. Pero syempre, dadaan din naman sa boss mo. And don't, and don't think na mag-isa lang ako na nag-handle ng mga projects. Definitely not. Madami kami. Ito lang yung mga ginagawa or line of work ng PM. Pero design, tech, yung mga boss mo, lahat yan may important role na pinaplay. Kailangan nyo talaga mag-work as a team para tapos yun yung mga project. So those are the things that I do as a PM in architecture. Huwag kayong matakot. <laughs> So funny because I feel like so technical din ng mga sinasabi ko pero hopefully hindi naman maintindihan niyo pa rin and just to ano para hindi din kayo matakot I'm going to share a few things that I like about being a project manager in architecture first and foremost it's a type A kind of job so sobrang 
that's my lane that's my forte uh, i love organizing i think it's fun <laughs> i enjoy ko naman yung ginagawa ko and marami din na, nga ako natutunan second is that pm work is slightly more objective than subjective i mean syempre may pagka subjective pa rin kasi in architecture, it's all about design. Design is subjective. Pero at least hindi ako yung main na naghandle ng design. And I'm really glad that I got to take a step back from design when I started working. Kasi I feel like in college, it was all about design, it was all about the concepts, ganun. And medyo na umay ako sa kanya a bit to the point na parang sa akin, parang sa akin ba talaga architecture? Ganun. But when I got offered to become a PM, I really got to see and appreciate a different side of architecture that I didn't really know much about when I was in college. So yeah, very grateful din naman ako na sa project management ako napunta for my first job. Next is that it's a very big help during the board exams. Matututo ka kasi mag-check ng code and mag-compute ng mga areas. Mga, yung mga FAR, mga GFA, ganyan, na nasa building ko. Rule 7 and 8, ayun. Sobrang ma, ma master mo siya. Sobrang na-familiarize din talaga ako sa kanya dahil sa line of work ko. So, yeah. Nakatulong talaga siya during the boards. Next is that it helps develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills. So, yun. Kapag may race na concern, whether si site or yung internal team mo, you have to be ready to help out and talagang try mo every little thing ganun ganunin mo para lang maka form kayo ng tamang solution yeah really develops a lot of critical thinking like lagi ako nag-iisip <laughs> And last but not the least, being a PM really helped me grow out of my comfort zone. It was during Christmas ng 2019 and I really prayed na I would find a job that's one, not toxic, and second, pinaka mag grow ako, not just as an architect but also just a person in general. And I really feel like na nabigay yung wish ko na yun. In project management kasi you have to talk to a lot of people and ako sobrang mahiyain akong bata as in I was super shy. Pero ngayon hindi na masyado. Shy na lang. <laughs> um, pero, syempre introverted pa rin ako. Pero kahit pa paano, kaya ko na makipag-usap nga sa ibang tao. Like, oh my gosh, tao lang din pala sila. Yeah, I feel like I really grew a lot in the past. Uh, few years. So yeah, those are all the things about project management and architecture. And guys, hindi ko kayo ni recruit ah. <laughs> Pero I just really wanted yun nga to give you an overview of some things that you can do in architecture. That's really one of the things that I discovered when I started working is that madami ka palang lanes na pwedeng um, puntahan just in architecture. Like yun nga, pwede kang PM, pwede kang mag-design, pwede kang mag-tech, pwede kang mag-site. Madami talaga. And I just really wanted to share what I've experienced para yun, you don't you don't have to go in blind when you start working. But guys, that is it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe and also don't forget to click on the notification bell so you're updated whenever I post a new video. Comment down below what video you want to see next and I hope to see you next time. Bye!